Thanks, Akum. So uh, I'm going to talk about some packages that we've been developing at Monash for the last year or so, providing time series analysis and forecasting and infrastructure in a tidyverse style. Um, so there's, there's a bunch of packages if you go to tidyverts.org, the TS for tidy version of time series. Uh, you'll get our packages, and so the, the main ones are here. Sybil provides the infrastructure for handling time series in a tidy context. Sybil data is lots of examples of data sets. Fable is for forecasting. Mitch O'Hara Wild spoke about that yesterday. So I'm going to just talk about mostly about feasts, which is features and statistics for time series. So it, it does feature extraction and statistics for any kind of temporal data. Um, and it uses the Tibbal package as its back end. Um, so it provides things like decompositions and statistical summaries such as autocorrelations and visualizations and so on. So let me just tell you a little bit about Sybils for those who have not used the Sybil package yet. Sybil package has been on CRAN for a few months now, maybe six months or so. Um, so a Tibble is very similar to a Tibble, Tibble being, of course, the tidy version of data frames. Uh, the differences are that there's a, some of the columns have special meanings. So in particular, in this example, you'll see that it's a, it's a looks like a Tibble with 15,000 rows and six columns. Uh, one of the columns is always a time index. Uh, in this case, it's the year. Some of the columns may provide key structures, so they're like additional indices, um, and then the rest of the columns are your observational data. So in this case, it's a, a four-dimensional multivariate time series with two indexes, one time and one something else. Uh, and at the top, you'll see that there's 263 countries in this data set, so there's 263 separate four-dimensional time series sitting inside this object. The one Y here tells you that it's yearly data. Here's another example. This is uh, 24,000 rows and five columns. We have an index, which in this case is quartal, quarters. There are three keys for this data set, so telling you the region, the state, and the purpose of travel. This is for tourism in Australia. And then the number of trips that people took uh, for each of those combinations of keys and for that particular quarter. So I'm going to use this data set as a vehicle of illustration. And you can see at the top it says this is quarterly data. So it always tells you what the... Um, the interval is, if it's irregular data, it'll, tell, it'll, it'll give you a mark to indicate it's not regular time series. Any time series can be done like this. The index column can contain any type of date, time, POSIX, whatever you like. So this is domestic visitor nights in thousands by state, by region, and by purpose of travel. So for a start, you can do all of the things that you may be used to doing in tidyverse style of programming, where we can filter, we can group by, we can summarize. So the first thing I've done is actually just some added up the total number of trips by state. So now I have a somewhat simpler Sybil with only one key, quarterly index, and this is the total trips by state uh, in Australia. So that's Sybils. It's just exactly what you're used to with tibbles or data frames, except that it has a couple of other things to enable you to handle large collections of related time series. What about graphics? There's some autoplot functions. So the, the holidays tibble, which is the one that I created right here, um, where we just took, uh, so this is it, quarterly trips by state. We can autoplot it and we'll get a time plot uh, with a nice legend. This is just ggplot, so you can do whatever you like to the output. Uh, as you're probably familiar with. Um, there's a new function, ggSeason, which does season plots. So that's time, that's plots against the season, in this case quarters, rather than against time. It will work for any type of data. Um, it'll figure out what the season is and, and produce the plot. And you can see that, for example, um, in New South Wales, which is Australia's most populous state, there's more travel in the first quarter and the last quarter which is summer for us, than there is in the middle of the year. Uh, for Northern Territory, which is sort of hot part of Australia up in the north, um, more recently there's been more travel in the, in the middle of the year when it's a little more comfortable. Subseries plots where you're plotting against the, uh, you're plotting each quarter separately, so you can look at particular patterns across quarters, and you can see, for example, in the Northern Territory, um, 
there's been quite a shift in the um, amount of visitors at the end of the series. So a real change in the, econ in the tourism economy in the Northern Territory um, has happened in recent years, um, particularly in quarters two and three. And you can see other, other patterns and things going on in the data. Autocorrelation plots, because the Tibble actually contains more than one series, when you ask for an autocorrelation, it'll give you all of the autocorrelations for all of the keys. In this case, we have only seven series, so it's given us seven autocorrelation plots. You can apply difference operators uh, before you, um, you compute the autocorrelation plot. Okay, so that's graphics. Uh, you can, there's, there's a bunch more things you can do as well, but that's some of the key ones that you might be interested in doing. Decompositions is another thing that we often try and do with time series. So we support four common time series decomposition methods. Classical decomposition, which you really only use for teaching purposes, not for real work. Uh, STL, uh, X11 decomposition and X13 seats. So the last two particularly popular in official national statistics offices. Um, STL is a little more flexible, but less used in the national statistics offices. So here's an example using STL. So we pipe the tibble into the STL function, and we say we want uh, periodic seasonality, so the seasonality is not going to change over time. And it will do it for all of the series in the tibble. So if you've got multiple series, it'll give you multiple decompositions and plot them all simultaneously, which is interesting because you can see there's much higher seasonality happening here in some of these series. This happens to be New South Wales um, as, the, as the, the main one there, and uh, I think the other one is Victoria. Um, you can see the trends for the different series. You can see the New South Wales is a stronger trend than some of the others, and then the remainder down the bottom. And it just reminds you in the, in the header what the decomposition was. Okay, and then the, another thing you might want to do is to compute features of your time series, where you take a time series and you compute a bunch of statistics. Um, so we have a features function, which takes the... Um, in this case, I'm actually working with the original set of data now, not just the, the ones on states, but on, on purpose of travel and on regions and the original, the original collection. So there's 304 series. And I've asked for all of the features that are tagged with the STL. So anything that uses an STL decomposition that it knows about, it will give me the feature. So it's come back with these uh, collection of features here, the strength of the trend, the strength of the seasonality, spikiness, linearity, and so on. And it does it for every combination of keys. The keys are the, are the things that define what a unique time series is. From that, we might want to do some plotting. So we look at the, uh, take the, the output of that and we pipe it into ggplot. And I'm interested in here in plotting the strength of the trend against the strength of seasonality, colored by purpose, to see what's, what sort of has the strongest um, and almost interesting patterns. So we see the green. The green spots are holidays, and you can see that the strong seasonality for seasonality is on the vertical axis, strong seasonality for, um, for New South Wales and, for, in fact, for almost all of the states. We can see there's relatively strong trends in Western Australia. Um, for the non-holidays, you can see there's not much seasonality and so on. So you see quite a lot here. Every dot is one of the 304 time series. So with a very large collection of time series, or in this case, moderate collection, we've managed to see some interesting structure that's going on. We can see what's more seasonal, where are the highest trends, and so on. You might be interested, well, what's the most seasonal time series in this large collection of time series? Again, we can use tidyverse-style things. We can compute the features. We find the one which is the maximum, and we then join it back and plot the data, and we see that this is actually snowy mountains in... New South Wales, which is Australia's most um, popular ski resort. You may not have known Australia has any ski resorts. We have a couple. Um, one of them is in the Snowy Mountains, and uh, the, the spike is snow season, because people don't generally go there very often if it's not snowing. We could find the... Um, we could look at all the features that the package knows about. It knows about 45. You can build your own feature functions uh, we just have some built in, so the 45 that are, are built in, compute them all. So we now have 304, 304 uh, series and 45 um, uh, statistics computed on each one. So what might you do with that? Well, we might do a principal component decomposition. 
So we, we uh, remove the um, character variables, the state, the region, and purpose, these first three columns, because they're not numerical. The rest of them are numerical things. And you see it's got stuff like ACF lag one, the f sum of the first 10 ACFs, the different data, ACF lag one. There's lots and lots of statistics that's computed. So we do a decomposition of the principal component decomposition of the numerical variables. Um, we put it back, add the data back with augment, and then we have this. Now, uh, the original data plus a whole lot of principal components have been computed, and then we might wish to plot them. So let's just do a plot of the first two principal components, and we see that the 304 series with all of these different features have now been projected down onto a two-dimensional feature space that looks like that. And you might think, well, what's going on here? There's some interesting stuff. We've got a whole collection of data out here. We've got a collection of data out here and a couple of outliers that look a bit odd. So we could say, well, let's see what, what uh, those two arms look like to begin with. Color by state. Doesn't look like there's any sort of patterns or anything going on there. Let's color by purpose. So we color the observations by purpose. And now you see all the holiday series are in the top arm up here and all of the non-holiday series, so that's visiting friends and relatives and business trips and other, are in this bottom arm here. We might say, well, what's going on with these two outliers? So we can pull them out. Um, so let's just do a filter. So we filter by the maximum on principal component one, which will give me this observation here. Uh, and then I will plot it, and we see, okay, this is Western Australia business travel in Australia's northwest. So the northwest of Western Australia, there's largely nothing there apart from crocodiles um, and a few refugees from Indonesia who've tried to escape and are lost in the desert. Like it is, nobody goes there, certainly not for business travel. So there's very, very small numbers of trips um, and it's a, it's a particularly unusual series for that re reason. What about the other outlier, this one over here? Um, so let's filter that out. So we just have to do a filter by um, uh, pulling out large, print large PC1 and large PC2. So we'll do that, so PC1 greater than 10, PC2 greater than two and a half, we'll have a look at it. So this is also Western Australia, this is holidays and this is in Australia's southwest. Um, so that means it's uh, in the wine region of Western Australia. So um, it's particularly unusual because it has such a strong uh, seasonal pattern, I think. Um, okay, so this is the sort of stuff that we can do uh, with the collection of packages. As I said, there's the Tibble package, which is already on CRAN, Tibble data, which is already on CRAN. The feasts and the fable packages will be on CRAN, uh, hopefully before you get home, but certainly in the next week or so. Um, they're, they're mature, I've used them for teaching, um, and we've used them in a lot of projects, and we think they're now ready for prime time in, on CRAN. So uh, you'll be able to find them there. Uh, this work is, uh, the, uh, a lot of the programming has been done by these two amazing programmers from my group, uh, Mitchell O'Hara Wild, and, who's here, and uh, Ira Wang, uh, who uh, is just finishing her PhD and about to move to the home of R at the Department of Statistics at Auckland University as a lecturer. You can find out about the feast package at feast.tidyverts.org. You can find out about any of the papers about you know, this type of way of doing time series analysis from my website. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Um, are there questions or comments, Rob? May I ask as well? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, might be a detailed question, but I'm interested in those features. Um, is the quarterly cyclical dominance in this stuff uh, in there among the features, or? Oh, um, so some of the features capture the seasonality and the, the timing of the seasonality as well as the strength of the seasonality. Um, so if you have particularly strong you know, data that happens to be particularly dominant in one quarter compared to another, then they will come out in the feature space, yeah. But the, the point about the features is really this is just a way to analyze large groups of time series, but if you have a particular set of data where a certain collection of features makes sense for that application, then you write your own features and um, the packages are easy to extend in that sense. Um, 
The features are simply functions that take vectors and produce numbers. Uh, is it fast to compute, like the 15,000 series or what you had? Uh, so in this particular example, it, I don't know, a couple of seconds to do that. Yeah, it's pretty quick. Um, the features that we've built in tend to be the relatively easy to compute ones. So you might come up with a feature that's slow to compute. Um, fine. You'll, um, it's, 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 there's parallelization built in if you, wanna, if you have lots of cores available and, you, and your feature calculation happens to be slow. I'm thinking about using, storing the features as meta description in, in my database. That's uh -huh. why I ask, and I potentially have to do this for millions of time series. So yeah, yeah. so that that certainly is a use case that we were thinking of. As I've worked with clients with a few million time series, and uh, just doing the sort of analysis we needed to do was painful using the packages I had previously developed. So we thought, well, let's start again. How would you do it, and what sort of infrastructure would we need? Yeah. Other questions? Still have some time? Hi, uh, thank you for the talk. And it's somewhere related to the uh, before question. Uh, how is the performance in when you have almost continuous data, for example, every five minutes or even, even smaller? It, it works well? It works fine, yeah. So that time index column can contain, you know, date time or POSIX, POSIX CT contain anything where you would normally store timestamps that will enable you to do that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That was one of the purposes of building the package is all my previous stuff was actually based on TS objects which work fine for monthly, quarterly and annual data, but once you get down to data that's, that's sub-daily, you know, TS is not designed for that case. So this, this, is, this is what was intended to do. And can TS, TS Sybil objects also handle MSTS objects as well as TS objects? Um, so it's the same. In, in the Sybil package, we don't treat MSTS, which is multiple seasonal time series, separately from other ones, um, if you pass a object which might be, say, hourly data to one of our, to a decomposition function, it knows it's hourly data, so it knows that it can find day of, time of day seasonality, day of week seasonality. So it's built in because we have timestamps. Um, if you don't want to have, if you say, suppose you had um, hourly temperature data where you're not going to have a day of week pattern because it's not based on the human calendar, you can tell it only treat time of day and time of year seasonality, if that's, if that's important. OK, thank you very much. Um, Can I? Will. One more thing. We're hiring. <laughs> <laughs> URLs at the bottom, and I have stickers. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much.